This is Patrick Russell. I'm interviewing Frank Cobb for the first time. This interview is taking place on August the 4th, 2021 in Clinton, Oklahoma. This interview is being conducted by the Making History Project. How are you doing today, Frank? I'm surviving. All right, that's a good start. Yeah. And uh, can you tell me what your birth date is? August 23rd, 1942. All right, and where were you born? I was born in Sumter, South Carolina. All right, and can you describe your hometown for me when you were growing up? What was it like? It was a center seat. It was a county. It was fairly large, not as large as what it is now. We had about 50,000 people, and we got about over a million there now. So it was very large. It had lots of lakes around it, and I had my own boat. And uh, I just grew up here making waves. All right. And how big was your family when you were a child? I had a sister, but she was 12 years older than I was. And uh, I had a mother and a father and a grandmother. And what did your parents do? My parents was, he was an aeronautical engineer. And he worked at Shaw Air Force Base on the new planes that came in. My mother was an office manager for Clawson Bread Company in the local town of Sumter. My sister became a doctor. I was mischievous when I was a child, and so I was in the Air Force. Mm, okay. And um, your father was an aeronautical engineer. Do you recall? What type of planes he was working on back then? Aeronautical engineer? Mm -hmm. Someone flies on airplanes. No, but do you know what type of planes he was working on? Yes. C 52s. Okay. C 52s. So it was a big cargo. Big cargo. Okay. Yeah. And we had a whole listing post. Oops. Yes, it was a cargo plate. All right. And um, when you were growing up, did you have any hobbies or play any sports? I played sports, some football, basketball. Uh, I didn't play basketball. I got two left feet. But uh, I played it, but not well. And uh, I taught tennis and I taught water skiing. Okay. And what about any hobbies as a child? Dating. <laughs> that was a hobby? Was Do you like to collect girlfriends? <laughs> I had a few. <laughs> okay. And um, so you went to high school? Sure. Yeah, what was the name of your high school? Edmond High School. All right. What year did you graduate? I don't remember dates. Okay. I went to University of South Carolina, failed out. I went to Clemson, failed out. And then they sent me to different schools all over, but it wasn't like a whole course. They just sent me in for portions, like languages, different kinds of languages. And I took math. I personally built my own computer. It had actually a radio shack kit, and I put it together if I had to get it to work. How old were you when you did that? And uh, I, I liked things like that. I used to write software for people. And uh, I had a very good time in the military. The military is, is what you make it. If you're good, it's good. If you're bad, it's not so good. But I was good. I tried to achieve everything I was ordered to do. 
I've had some lot of, a lot of experiences, some of which I can't talk about, but uh, quite a few experiences have been all over the world. Well, let's first start of how you got into the military. So, do you remember? Yeah, do you remember really, when you got into the military? The, oh, I mean, I went to basic. No, no, but like the year. Do you remember the year that you went into the no. military? Um, how did you get in? Why, why did you get into the military? How's that? Judge gave me a choice of getting into the military or letting him decide what he was going to do with me. Oh. And, so uh, uh, you, you volunteered for I the... I volunteered, yeah. And what did you volunteer to do? Which service? Air Force. Okay. Why did you choose the Air Force? I figured my chances of survival, this is Vietnam going hot and heavy, all right. I figured my chance of survival was better than the Air Force, seeing how I wasn't flying than any uh, other services. All right. And so you volunteered for the Air Force. Um, you went to basic training. How was that? It should have been longer. I've been to longer training groups when I had to get ready for a mission. And, uh, but basic training was okay. I was the uh, squad leader. And uh, I did well in some subjects and bad in others. I enjoyed myself everywhere I've been because I interpose my personality onto other people. Okay, and um, so after, ba do you remember where basic training was? Lackland Air Force Base. Okay, and then after that, did you have any type of advanced training? I went to, I took crypto at Lackland, not Lackland. I guess it was Lackland, and uh, I left. While I was still there, they sent me to two different schools, and uh, I came back and uh, I used to teach junior college on what I learned. All right, so can you tell me a little bit about cryptography and how it works? What are some of the basics? Excuse me? Can you tell me a little bit about how cryptography works in the basics? It takes a signal that's coming in that's encrypted by not so friendly people and I decipher it or we produce secret messages and I encrypt it. And you did both? I did both, yes. Did you prefer one over the other? Encrypting was a whole lot easier. Deciphering, you can pull your hair out in a short time. But I couldn't really do it until I get real tired. Then my, mall go, my mind goes into a fog and I can figure out this fog I'm trying to figure out. And I've done quite a few of them. And so it's you're you're breaking a code. I'm breaking a code. All right. Uh, and I'm creating a code, but I've actually got equipment that creates it. But when you're breaking the not so friendly person's code, it's like solving a puzzle. Yeah. All right. And you probably don't have too many reference points. You have to try to figure out what those characters. Yeah, mean. you know basically they all have, all of them use Boolean algebra and at one time I could do calculus in my head till I had these three strokes and uh, I was good at math excelled in math spelling cat the same way twice was difficult good. So your mind that's, works different than most people that's rote memory, being able to spell no names, street addresses, tell. I don't know my telephone number because I don't have rote capabilities of recalling something. But as far as going someplace, I can go someplace and go there right away without looking because I had 
I could retain that information because it's not rote information. Is this something you always had growing up? I, I didn't know it until I went in the military. Or before I went in the military, I didn't know it. I just realized I wasn't doing really, really good in all subjects in school. And uh, I went in the military, and they tested everybody going in. And they had about 11 of us stay for nine days testing us. What do they do in nine days? They did more elaborate tests. Like that's what, give me an example. I, that's why I went in, oh, okay. That's why I went into crypto. Okay. But yeah, not specifics, but like what what like are they, they trying like they, to figure like out? They, like they would make up a maybe they are talking their real language. But let's say they made up a language and we supposed to repeat it and try and interpret what they were talking about. And uh like I said, that's rote memory, remembering what was said. But I could figure out what they were talking about when they were talking. And um, when they do this test, about how many people are you testing with in nine days? About 12, a dozen. A dozen. And these are people like you. Yeah. They have but, some no, special they, abilities. You know, they, all had special abilities of one sort or another. And I really don't know, except for one, I also went in the crypto, what the rest of them did. So I guess that was my next question. How many did what you did? Uh, and at school, that was 11. In school, you had 50, I guess, 50 people at three different shifts going to school. But in the, in the the testing phase of say the twelve people, all twelve made it to your school. I don't really know. I would imagine so because they all pretty smart. Um, if you did good in school, you got your choice. If, if you were in the top three, you got your choice of where to go to. If they had a need in the world. And I went to Sweden. Were you in the top three? Yeah, well, I made the top three. And you went to Sweden? Didn't stay there long. I went to Vietnam. Why did you choose Sweden? Stupid. But there was a reason. What was the reason? I just wanted, I heard so much about Sweden and the Sweden women and the girls and whatnot. I figured there's your like there's it. your collecting again. <laughs> I said, there's a good reason for going. Then I went there and it wasn't like that at all. Yeah, well, I was irritated, but I still had fun. Why were you irritated? Because there wasn't what you wanted to do? But it didn't meet my expectations. What did you expect? I expected girls out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I expected. And as for, I was just what they call a jeep. Brand new at something. When I went there, I was deep on everything. I had to learn their procedures and everything. So I didn't really enjoy that too much. I, I, it didn't bother me. It just a nuisance. All right. So when you go to your first posting in Sweden. What are you going as? What is your position or title? Cryptographic specialist. Okay. And there's an office in Sweden? No, I didn't have an office. I mean, I was just a little airman type thing. You were airman's. The office they have is the hall. Okay. So you go there and are you able to say what type of work you're doing in Sweden? I didn't do crypto in Sweden. I mean, they had it, but I was too Jeep, you might say. Too new? Yeah. What does Jeep stand for, the, the acronym? Someone they don't own anything. <laughs> okay. All right, so the 
Sweden posting didn't meet your expectations. How long were you there for? About nine months. And then I left and went to the States. From the States, I played Vietnam. You went to Vietnam? Yep. And All right. I, Where in Vietnam did you go? Toshiku. Anyway, I played Vietnam a little bit. Didn't do what I was expecting I was going to do. And I left there and went to... How long were you in Vietnam? Well, I got my year in, but you have to serve a year. Okay. So you spent an entire year in Vietnam? Yeah. All right. And what were you doing in Vietnam? Whatever they told me to do. I was a jeep. But what are some of your tasks or assignments? I went on some missions as a backup, not as a prime person, but as a backup. And mostly what a mission is is walk, 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 walking all the time. We went in one place, that was a village, and that's when the enemy started playing with grenades. And we decided this is a bad place. So anyway, still in planes and fixed that. But but I had a good time in the military. I had a very exciting life. And when I gained rank, it got to be work. And I enjoyed the work. So when you're in Vietnam and you're walking and walking, you're, are you trying to get messages from the enemy? No, we just on patrol. You got areas which we got to come patrol all the time. And the jeep ones and the work shares, you go. Oh, so you're not really doing your cryptography work no, then? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You're patrolling? Patrolling, yes. No, that's not something that you really signed up for. That's true, but it was it was new. I enjoyed it. Okay. And except for the walking, I mean, I wouldn't mind walking, but I walked a lot. And when you're walking a lot, are you are you walking with other people like you? Oh other yeah, we in a squad of of cryptographers. Yeah, a squad. Not a, not a cryptographer, just me and another guy's crypto going with them, but. Um, you know, only two Crip 306s went, and, uh, and I don't know why we went, but he didn't have a job out there that involved our tr talents, but uh, it just we had to go. I had a good time while I was in the military. One of the worst mistakes in my life that I've made was deciding, screw this, I'm getting out, and I got out. But I got out and made money. I used the knowledge that I had gained in the military to place docks, buy property, and I, I made money. Good. Still making it, in fact. And um, did your did any of your work in Vietnam, was the goal to find out whether the Chinese were doing something or the Russians were doing something? Or? It's about like you're blind. You don't know what's happening or what you're seeing or as you understand it. We played. Things that stand out in my mind is that with Vietnamese, we would play softball. I mean, that's what I remember more than anything else. And I wasn't any kind of spies or anything, but a couple, not crypto, because we, we got two guys on us. We were making sure nothing happens to us because we were trained so hard. And uh, we were, I guess, considered valuable merchandise. And uh, so we had 
two people guarding us everywhere we went. When you say softball, what do you mean? Well, these guards weren't really, they were, they had a double duty. They uh, protected us, watched out for anything that might be wrong, and took notes on what we did. So, okay. softball in terms of it was like slow pitch and easy, you were, you stayed away from all the, the bad stuff. Actually, it wasn't. Where I was and what I did, it was somewhat fun. I mean, it's a new adventure. You walking around in, in cane forest or evergreen trees, you know, not evergreen, but the trees over there, maple, and uh, I enjoyed it personally. Uh, while I was there, we did survival training, and I had to learn how to eat worms out of a rotten stump and catch fish and pick vegetables and whatnot, wild. And uh, that was pretty fun too. It got scary at times, but a good scary. It's not like a scary, you'll never do that again. But like a scary, that was somewhat like fun when you get away from it. But we did a good job. We won. So after Vietnam, what do you do? Came back to the state. And I went all over the all over the states. I was at Berkstrom at uh, they already put me in what's called a TAC, Far Air Control TAC unit. And they would put us on a plane, and there's always two of us. They put both of the crypto people on a plane, and the plane would go someplace, drop us off. And we try and stay busy so you won't get a detail. But we had fun doing that, and we went everywhere. I've been just about everywhere. What do you mean by staying busy so you don't get a detail? If you're standing around leaning against the building, they find something for you to do. So when they drop you off somewhere, yeah, what oh, are when you... they drop us off, we have missions. We have an honest to God mission. And the missions there were six months long because it actually it was less than six months, just a hair less. Because if you've been there six months, it's called a short tour. And so they don't let you do that unless it's... So it would be there about six and a half months and we have another group come in and we leave. But I said I had excitement galore, entertainment galore. It, um, it almost sounds like out of a spy novel. Is that the, Am I getting the right vibe for that? There was no spying. No, we don't do things like that. Okay, so you get dropped off. Are you doing your cryptography work now? Or are you sending messages and no, trying to? No, right now I'm just trying to stay. I had a three strokes. No, no, I'm talking your your here. your missions here. Oh, missions, yeah. Are you trying? Are you sending out messages and trying to decipher? Well, you're mostly trying to intercept messages. Okay. And do with them what we could, but they normally got sent on without a recommendation of what this was, in the circumstances in which we got it. And uh, I broke some messages out in the field, but not too many. And how are you acquiring these messages? Is this by electronic devices or? I, I can't tell you yay or nay. Okay. Where were you? Can you say some of the places? I spent quite a bit of time in Germany. I spent a lot of time in China. I spent a lot of time in Taiwan. I was basically 
interpreter in language Chinese, Burmanese, and all those. You can actually yeah. You can speak those languages. I could. I couldn't even speak English when I had my stroke. But I've heard, I was watching TV one time, and it is something about happening in Hong Kong. They had a mob of people, and I understood what they were saying, and it dawned on me. I could understand them, but I thought it was totally gone. Hmm. Okay, and so, when you were getting dropped off on these missions in Germany and in China and Taiwan, what years was this? I can't tell you. All right, and what did you do after those assignments? Was there anything else after that in your military career? I can't remember the base I went to, but it's Air Force Headquarters base. I think it's Scott. I stayed at Scott and I taught people under me crypto and show them how to troubleshoot things for real. I had a good job. But also at that time frame, I was coming down with rheumatoid arthritis. So I was you might say incapacitated by the disease. But I still went. You know, I hurt. It was my job. How long did you teach? Do what? How long did you teach at the Air Force Base? I'd say a couple of years, but it wasn't a straight period. It was intermediate. And when you would, going back now to the field, when you would the couple times that you broke a code, how did that make you feel? Like you like was that like a yeah, that's a like Shazam balloon. moment? It's like balloons going off. Yeah. yeah. Then you gotta check it out because if you send something in that's not really it's still garbled, you get nasty notes. <laughs> Were you ever worried in cryptography of deciphering something? and then worried that they're sending you the wrong message intentionally? That happens all the time on both sides. Okay, so how do you, so you, that is somebody else's job to figure out. Once we read it, we, and somebody investigates it, not me, they will investigate the circumstances and the facts around it. And then what the results were, I never knew. And about how long were you in the military total? 24 years. I was going to go for 30, but I got out when they wouldn't let me go to the Far East. Okay. Did you have any kind of close calls during any of your missions? I had two when I was on an airplane at the time. I, I can't talk about it. Okay. Any other one that you can talk about? Uh, let's say, I told you a little while ago, they, they locked on Sam Radar surface air missiles twice. And, uh, that was the Chinese? Oh, China did that. We were monitoring Vietnam, northern part of Vietnam. But to get there, you got to fly over China. And China didn't appreciate it. I don't know. They're kind of picky that way. <laughs> All right, so after 24 years, which included several years of teaching, you then retire from the military. 
all I can say was I was in crypto and I did my job. Mm -hmm. The job varies through many different things. And on my side time, I did programming. I sold some programs. In fact, I set up one program and the company copied it. We worked it out. I should have got some royalties or something, but they didn't do it. And uh, so they got a freebie. But I got some money from programming for people. But I had a good life. Mm -hmm. And then you. So after your retirement, where where did you did you move back to Oklahoma, South Carolina? To, where'd I you went go? I back to South Carolina. Oh, while I was in Germany, I got a divorce. And a nasty divorce. Anyway, I came back to my hometown. And my ex-wife, of course, showed up on me almost as I was walking in the door, checking up on me, ruined my trip home. But uh, I had a good time. I would do it again. And um, is there a point where you moved to Oklahoma? Tinker. I was at Tinker in Oklahoma, All right. and I was at, I had been at several bases, some of them which I don't remember the names. Okay. And um, is there anything you would like to add that I didn't ask you today? Nothing that's kind. <laughs> no, I think they make. I think well, the Air Force has got to do it. They put too much value on accuracy. And it can get you in serious trouble if you're not. And you got under that suspicion. And like I said, I always had two observers to see who talked to me and who I talked to. So I, that's a cloud over your head. I couldn't go gamble. They got some of the best gambling places in, in the world in Germany. I couldn't go to one. Strip shows, I couldn't go to anything that was uh, less than nicely social. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I guess they didn't want you to be compromised. You make sure you don't have a do. You know, I couldn't give a phone book to anybody. <laughs> That's true. Because if I could give a phone book to somebody, I could give anybody something, you know. So, so that's what he monitored for, to make sure that I didn't step out of bounds. I'd go to parties, that was a little bit illegal, like smoking drug. And, uh, but other than those limitations, I had a good time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would like to tell future generations or give any words of wisdom or advice? Just do what they tell you to do. Do it the best you can, the fastest you can. Getting mad does not help. That's what I'd say, just be like you're dealing with a friend when they yell at you. you. Deal with it as if he was your friend yelling at you. And, uh, no, military life was a good life. I enjoyed myself. I could do basically about anything I wanted to as long as I go out of bounds. Yeah. We both 
you know, you'd tie a winding bolt that furniture like you wouldn't believe. I mean, super fine furniture. And uh, of course, my, my ex got this when we divorced. Anyway, uh, as I said, it was, I said, 95% enjoyable. 5% was really, really, really bad. Okay. All right, Frank. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to sit with me today and share your story. Man, I was, I was about to take my clothes off. It's getting hot. <laughs> Try not to. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you. And uh, Where did I drop? It's okay. It's only glasses. <laughs> All right, I want to thank you again for your, your sharing your story and for your time today and your military service. Well, I didn't know it was going to be like this. I, I kind of enjoyed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I, it's a shame I can't tell you facts. But uh, I'd like to understand some of the facts I have bad. Mm. So, 